YouTube friends and welcome back to another video. Today is going to be another Amber Gale vlogs. If you haven't noticed, I have some new hair. I'm excited. Um, this is just like air dried, slept in, not, I haven't done anything to it so just ignore that. Um, but the color is different. Yeah, so Sunday night I filmed a clip um, talking about a little bit of an update with my heart issues um, and how that has been going and how my cardiology appointment went Friday because I didn't film that. Um, I was really anxious Friday and just ridiculous. I think I talk about it in the clip, but you'll just see it in a second. And I also talk about um, what I'm doing for student teaching and how I'm preparing for that and the things I have to do to get ready for that. And I also go on a little bit of a rant about um, how hard it is to become a teacher from the, like by the state standards and yet how much of a shortage of teachers we have and how we are underpaid and underappreciated. <sighs> I ramble on about that for a little bit. So um, I hope that you enjoyed <laughs> this clip of me talking about giving you an update and then ranting about school. I just wanted to update you all on what's going on with my doctor's appointments and my cardiologist and the medications I have been recently put on, or medication what singular not plural and then I also want to talk about some things that I am doing for student teaching and to prepare for that this coming semester um, and honestly some of the taboo stereotypical stereo <laughs> stereotypical things that people don't talk about with teaching that really makes me upset <laughs> so um, let's just jump right in okay so first things first my cardiologist appointment I had this past Friday um, I was extremely, extremely nervous going into it, and I don't know why, um, that's something I'm going to talk to my counselor about, I think, is because I don't know where that anxiety I was having that day was coming from, and I can't really pinpoint it. I mean, I was going to a new location, a new doctor, a new building by myself, and it was, it was really hard, and I was also nervous as to what information I was going to receive as well, so I think that, that may have played a role, but it was, it was very stressful for me for some reason. I spoke to my cardiologist, he ran some basic tests um, and just did a kind of a consultation, asked me a bajillion questions and kind of talked to me about a lot of those things. And to make a really long story short, <laughs> he basically says I have one of two things. One is extremely common, or not extremely common, but more common, and one is very, very, very rare. Um, we cannot really test for the common one, it's just something that like you just diagnose based on symptoms and um, kind of rule out other things and get done with that. So the common one is irregular heartbeats. So being someone that's just prone to have irregular heartbeats where my heart will race and cause me to be dizzy and lightheaded. That also caused my blood pressure to go up. Um, and so basically 95% of the people who have this irregular heartbeat thing um, is put on this medication that is to help lower your heart rate, which will also help lower your blood pressure. So it's basically a blood pressure medication. Uh, I am taking the lowest dose um, possible pretty much of it right now. Um, and I'm very grateful that my insurance and CVS um, 
pays for it, so like I don't have to pay a thing. I don't have a copay for it at all, which is a blessing. I was literally prepared for it to be way more money than I, um, you know, needed it to be because I am broke right now. It's Christmas season and all these doctor's appointments, they are not free. Um, and so it's, it's hard. It's really hard to manage it all. And I feel guilty for putting it all on my parents, but at the same time, I don't have a job right now and I'm on my parents or my dad's insurance and it's just, it's a, I'm in a weird stage in life and I'm like almost an adult. Well, I am an adult, but I'm also still like living on my parents' money, but also under my grandparents' house and I don't have a, a job. Like it's, it's just, I'm in such a weird place in my life and it's, it's hard, it's hard. So we can see exhibit A as to why Amber has anxiety and high blood pressure. <laughs> the other really rare thing that I could have which would make a lot of sense actually um, is this I swear I cannot remember what this thing is adrenal glands I think yes adrenal glands is that a thing I think I think that's what this is I will look this up later and if it's not then I'll, I'll correct myself on the screen I think he said that it's in your adrenal glands and you sometimes can have benign tumors in your adrenal glands which can make your adrenal glands excrete um, hormones into your body which then cause high blood pressure and a high heart rate so it also causes an imbalance of hormones which is why I was put on birth control when I was 15 16 years old because I had an imbalance in hormones and I could not control um, anger outburst and it's just like all these things are starting to come together and that would make a lot a lot of sense um, with my past history I wasn't able to really go into detail with the cardiologist about that. I don't know. It was an odd situation. I'm not going to talk about it. Because I was put on that birth control, my cardiologist also told me that that birth control can also sometimes uh, cause high blood pressure. So there is this enormous amount of stress, this enormous amount of um, anxiety I'm dealing with, um, this... 2020 year that everyone is dealing with together the uncertainty of just the general period of my life that I'm in right now with trying to finish up college it's just kind of touch and go and here there and everywhere and I don't really know what's going on um, no one does and then on top of everything this just keeps piling up you know I'm uncertain about my career choice and I, I'm just I'm struggling and there's a lot of things piling on top of each other and I just can't see the light at the end of the tunnel at this point. And the pills I have to take are literally smaller than a baby aspirin. And I'm not someone, like, I can't take pills. I've never swallowed a pill in my life. And I swallowed this pill this morning and I was so happy. <laughs> Which I know is not a big ordeal. It's literally smaller than an ibuprofen. It is smaller than a baby aspirin. Like, it's, like, so tiny. But, like, it was a big ordeal to me. Okay, so let me have my moment. Please, and thank you. <laughs> oh, my lab work for my white blood cell count, it did come down. Um, so my white blood cell count was not extremely high. It was not something crazy to worry about. That was really good. Also, my video that I just posted um, yesterday uh, about my 21-year-old gets a heart monitor actually has 89 views right now. And that is more views than most of my other videos combined. So... That's exciting. That's so exciting. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, go subscribe to my channel. Now on to the other part of what I wanted to talk about. I want to show you guys part of what I am doing to prepare for student teaching. This is not on my own will. This is what I'm being told to do, okay? Just saying. Okay, so this is um, the Google Classroom that I have. It's Action Research for Student Teaching. We have a book we have to buy for student teaching that is called You and Your Action Research Project. This is the fourth edition by this dude. And we have a Google Classroom set up through the college. Uh, and this is my advisor and kind of like what she tells us to do. Go to the Classwork tab and we have these three things. So we have a study guides for chapters 1 through 3, 4 through 6, and so on and so forth. So it's just a Google Doc. I already have this one open, and this is what I've been working on. And so it's just questions um, about each chapter we have to answer, right? And there's 
you know, they're, they're just different questions based on what they feel as we read the book and as we read each chapter. This is technically what I call, I basically think of this as being another online class that I'm taking before student teaching. However, this is usually, they used to group it in with student teaching, so you used to have to like read this book and do this as your student teaching, which is a lot. And so they split it and, and told students to do it over Christmas break, which does make a lot of sense. We have a Zoom meeting on January 3rd at 7 p.m., which is a Sunday night. It's a little odd to me. We usually don't do stuff, but I understand there's not much time because student teaching technically starts at 4 on the 4th, <laughs> January 4th. So uh, we have to get a roll on or move on with this. So that's what we're doing for that. I have emailed, well, I have scheduled emails to send out Monday morning. I don't like sending emails um, over the weekend to like teachers and like school related things because I think it's kind of rude. Now, college professors are a different story. I, if you're going to assign me homework over the weekend, I'm going to email you about it. I mean, like if I need help or any have a question, I don't have a problem doing that. My thing is like, I don't want to email my cooperating teacher and my cooperating principal for that school on a Saturday. I just kind of felt like that was weird. So I wrote the emails and scheduled them to send um, tomorrow morning. So those are scheduled to send and I'm going to wait for responses on those. My biggest complaint is this book is already talking about how we as teachers are people who are academically um, on a level that is higher than other people. Um, for example, I don't want to misquote anything, so I'm just going to read directly to you from this. And for those of us who are sufficiently privileged to work or study on work-based or higher education courses, the responsibility to use our knowledge will becomes knowledge well becomes all the greater. Yes, I agree. We are privileged to have our our knowledge. That's that's great. But if we, if I have to read a book and a textbook about this and answer questions about it and do an action research project, and from what I understand, the action research project is literally like a 20 page long essay kind of thing at the end of the semester. If I have to go through and do all that, but I am still paid as if I have an associate's degree, that makes me angry. Am I grateful that teachers have gotten pay raises over the last several years? Absolutely. You know, 10 years ago, teachers made way less than they do now. But let's also think about price inflation. Let's think about how much a babysitter makes. I made really good money just being a live-in nanny um, for several months. And I only worked weekends and I was making, if I had done that every week and counted up my hours, I would make way more money per hour than I do as a teacher. Teachers go the extra mile. They put in the extra effort, especially this year with COVID. And what have they gotten? Nothing. And so I'm sitting here reading this textbook and I'm getting upset about it. Like I have to go through all of this crap and I have to pay a ton of money, not only for tuition and for my degree, and I'm so grateful that I have free tuition, so I shouldn't even be talking about that. I'm aware of my privilege in that category, and I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that, and I am so eternally grateful that I have that opportunity. However, not everyone else does. There are plenty of people out there who are working their butts off with part-time jobs or work studies to pay off their tuition. And on top of all of that, we also are expected to pay money to go to internships, have, provide our own gas money to drive to said internship. Then we're expected to pay more money to student teach. We pay to be a full-time co-teacher while not getting paid in a school district. But we pay not the college, the teacher. Well, we pay through the college and the college pays the teacher to do that. Then once all that is said and done and I actually have my degree, I still have to pay $150 more just to Okay, welcome back to real time. <laughs> so right now it is 1037. I need to leave at 11 a.m. Um, and I need to go take the trash off. I need to go to 
uh, my mom's house and drop off um, a credit card that I accidentally stole from her. I did not mean to. <laughs> I was borrowing it and then forgot to give it back to her. Anyway, gotta go drop that off at her house. And then, um, then I have to go get some lunch and then I am tutoring from noon to three today. Um, since I have a little bit of time, I'm actually gonna answer some emails right now and then I will put some shoes on and pack up my stuff and go. have been ran. I'm going to call in some food. Food market. Hi, can I place a ticket order? Go ahead. Can I get um, a steak and cheese plain? Steak and cheese sub? Yes, just plain. Mm -hmm. And a small curly fry. A what? Small curly fry. Okay. And that'll be it. What's the name? Um, Scott. All right, thank you. Thank you. Usually they're much nicer than that, but she was obviously not having a great day. <laughs> okay, let's get some food. Later that same evening. Hi, I'm home. Um, today I'm going to plan to kind of relax a little, not do a whole lot. Um, but what I want to do is work on signing some Christmas cards. These are the new cards I bought this year. We do Christmas cards at church every year, and my mother hates writing Christmas cards with a living passion, and so I do it for my, me and my parents, because we're the ones that go to that church. My grandparents who I live with don't go to that church. Um, so, I've already signed and packaged uh, 34 Christmas cards. They're, I'm just using a Mod Podge of all the different Christmas cards we had stored over the years, like... It's just random cards. So, um, there's 34 I've done so far, and I really need to make about 70 cards usually is what we make for our church members. And I actually did something different this year. I had this paper with that was already bordered for Christmassy stuff. I don't remember where I got it from, but I got it from somewhere. Um, and so I printed out the story of baby Jesus and the birth of baby Jesus on these um, Christmas, um, like, Paper. Like it's just regular printer paper kind of, but it's got like this border around it. So like I just printed the words on here. And this one I did the same measurements as the snowflakes one, but this one is not quite like it's a little bit on the border. But hey, it, it, it's still legible and I'm not reprinting it. So um, I'm actually folding these up in the Christmas card. Here's one of the other cards we have. It says greetings on it. 
Um, and then on the inside, it says, wishing you a season filled with all your favorite holiday traditions. And it's, I signed it. It says, Merry Christmas and with much love, John Rita and Amber Scott. Um, and then I folded this up and stuck it in there. And it's the, the paper of the story of Baby Jesus. And so they can unfold it and read it. I just thought it was something kind of different and cute to include in our Christmas cards this year as a reminder because we're not having all these like, you know, Christmas events and plays and shows and stuff that I love to do um, because of COVID. I thought, you know, let's, let's put a little friendly reminder of what Christmas is all about anyway. It's not about the plays and the shows and all that fun stuff that I love to do. That's not the reason for Christmas. The reason for Christmas is to celebrate Jesus' birth. And I think that reading the, the story of baby Jesus is very important. And I want to make that a tradition in my future family is to read the story of Jesus' birth every year. My goal today is to get all of these done. I think this is like 30 or 40 cards here. Um, let's see. So this should be 32 cards here. So I'm going to do these 32 cards, and then I still have two other stacks of cards to do as well. This is the Three Kings, and then this one is, uh, it says, Home is Where the Heart is at Christmas, which is very cute. So what I'm going to do right now is just turn on some TV um, and watch something, and then start packaging all these envelopes um, of Christmas cards. Yay! <laughs> Okay, so I have finished all of the Christmas letters, um, for today at least. I have finished all of those, that is 64 Christmas cards. I also have not fully updated on my doctor's appointments and stuff. I included the clip that I had the other week um, in this vlog, however, uh, I did get some more information yesterday, I believe. Um, my doctor called me and said that my halter monitor test, um, did not show anything that was concerning. However, it did show that I had a really elevated heart rate. Um, it was up to 178 when I had the monitor on, which I did not do anything crazy. I was not running around. I was not exercising. I was not doing anything crazy. Those were normal days. They were not stressful days either. Um, and so that was a normal day that my heart rate got up to 178 um, and that is not normal essentially so other than that there was nothing to be concerned about um, for my halter monitor results the other thing that it indicated was that I had something called an early heartbeat where like something where your heart like I have like a tiny almost a murmur that's like before my actual heartbeat and it kind of like it, it just makes my heart more inclined to have a higher heart rate um but it's not like abnormal or concerning it's not like a problem it's just something that I have um and it's really common she said that to to have those for people to have them and some people have them and have absolutely no heart problems whatsoever. So, just an interesting tidbit about myself, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, I just realized that was terrible lighting, but... So yeah, I will take you guys along for the little journey of that. I'm gonna try and vlog in front of my friends. I haven't ever done that before. I'm just so scared. <laughs> so we'll see. I may or may not. Anywho.
that is pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit that post notification bell so that um, you get notified every time I post a new video. And as always, I can't wait to catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.